of these animals have something in common, of okay. course. When it's a when it's a cold weather animal, they have really specific adaptations to survive. Oh boy. This happens to be one of the most famous out of all of the cold weather animals. This, do you know what it is? It looks like a wolf to me. <laughs> this is actually an Arctic fox. That's a she, fox. Yeah, and she's still very young. She's currently in training right now, so this is why we're being really calm right now. <laughs> She, she's, it seems like she's big for a fox, right? You know, she's pretty much full grown already and really a big part of what is making her look large is the fur. And believe it or not, she has some of the warmest fur out of all the Arctic animals in the world. It's extremely thick. She even has fur on the bottom of her paws. We'll see if she'll let me check her out wow. here. Can you see the bottom of her paws? Oh, look at that. Yeah. So that even keeps her nice and warm as well. So beautiful. Yes, and what's really neat about this she animal... She literally looks like either I or one of my staff is going to die. <laughs> yeah. Like she's... Yeah, this is all very new to her. So being an animal ambassador, she's getting used to being around people and teaching people about how incredible she is and all Arctic species are. What I think is really neat about this species is that they can camouflage. They can change their camouflage depending on what the season is. Really? So right now it's winter, so she has this thick, beautiful white fur. You know, hares have it, polar bears have it up there as well. Blends in very well. Yes. But when the summer and uh, spring comes, they lose all this fur and they start to get this black brownish coloration, which, help, which actually helps them blend into the tundra during the spring. That's amazing. This is a chinchilla, and a lot of people mm. actually have them as pets. Yeah. They live further south than the Arctic fox. This animal lives in the Andes in a very arid, dry, very cold, over three, 4,000 meters above sea level. Incredible. So they have actually the thickest fur out of any mammal in the entire world. Do I don't you want to hold her? I'll, I'd love to. I yeah, don't want to be rude. she's really good. She looks like a, like a rat with a coat on. Well, I mean, she does a little bit. Yeah. She's real. Oh my gosh, the softest coat. Yeah, up. you can even hold your hands like this. Okay. She has extremely squishy feet as a rodent, because I know you love rodents. I don't like rodents. I know, but you do so well. You've gotten she's so She's a well. rodent too? Yeah. yeah. Every time I come on, I bring on a rodent because but it's I'm the determined. Coat. It's the coat. She's so pretty. <laughs> she is very beautiful. Um, so she uses these squishy feet to balance around on all the rocks up in the mountains in the Andes. But the thick fur not only keeps her warm, but it also... Uh, Can you take it back? It's yes. Really, it, I'm so sorry. I just... If I had known that was a rodent, I would never have done that. Oh. So if a predator actually tries to grab onto her, they wouldn't be able to get a really good grip because of how thick her fur is, and chunks can fall out sometimes. And she's e I think she's eating your hair. Well, she's jealous of my hair, yeah. though, right? And so that helps her get a really quick getaway if uh, an animal grabs it, but chunks of fur comes out. It reminds me of like a gecko tail. Yeah, they it, break off. Yeah, it can break off. And then the predator's like, woo, I got it. We're good to go. And then the chinchilla can run away. So this is a groundhog. Why I brought this winter animal out is because they are a true hibernator. They go underneath the ground and in dens, and they will stay for several months in a row. And what's really cool is that they can almost shut down all of their body systems. They can get their heart rate down to four to 10 beats per minute. They can get their body temperature down to 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Other animals, they would wake up throughout the winter and maybe go grab a bite to eat or stretch out. They will stay there until about February when they come out. And that's a big reason why um, there is this cultural tradition about Groundhog's Day. They would come out, and a lot of the people, actually, it started in Pennsylvania. When the animal would come out, it would see light, it would get scared and go back into its den. And then people would say, like, oh, that means it's afraid and telling us that there's six more weeks of winter. None of that is actually accurate. But there's still one of those special animals and big yeah. part of our American culture. And we have one more, right? Yes, we do. So come on over here so you can check out our yak. So there's many different species of yak. This particular one. Wow. has been bred to survive really harsh conditions. So they have really thick fur. They're really yeah. hardy animals. They're actually pack animals as well. So people up in the Himalayans have trained these animals to be really comfortable about, around humans, to be very comfortable and agile around the cliffs and mountains up there. So sweet. Yes. Is, is this yak fully grown? Yeah, she is. She's about 13 years old. So you, I thought a small it, species. Didn't y'all think they would be bigger, right? But yes. they're so tiny. This is one species. The one you're thinking of, the big brown one with yeah, the horns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different Several species. different kind of species of yak. And the people not only used them as pack animals, but also this animal is uh, has beautiful fibers to make clothing for them. They have very nutritious milk and meat as well. So a lot of the people there depended on them for survival for thousands of years. So they're an absolutely beautiful. incredible species. Amazing. Yes. It is always so fun and informative when you're here, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Thank you.